What's going on, growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. The garden is under attack and it seems like there's no way to fix it. Today, me and Tucker are going to show you what we have growing and share with you a problem that we just dug up. Let's go! Before I show you the part of the garden that's under attack, I want to first show you the part that isn't for contrast. Look at this bed. It's filling up beautifully. There's so many plants in here. The diversity, the health, the spacing, you love to see it. Let me show you some of the things up close. Like look at this section of carrots and that one square foot, 16 carrots, looking just fantastic, spaced correctly. Slow bolt leaf lettuce, looking so nice. We've got spinaches, broccolis, onions, anything you can think of. The health of these plants is, uh, it's a, it's a big contrast compared to the one section that's just under attack, which I'll get to in just a little bit. I wanna show you these grapes over here. Look how well they're spaced out. This is from proper pruning and training. We've got them all, so there's plenty of space for each shoot. Each shoot has flowers on it, which will then have grapes, every single one of them. So this is just gonna be loaded with grapes in the future. Let's move over to another section. Check out this raised bed here, where it's looking really nice also. Look at the size of some of this Mustard right here, these mustard greens, looking really nice. Cabbages, look at this uh, Chinese purple cabbage. Look at the size of these leaves. Oh man, you love to see it. More brassicas here. We've got some parsley, and we've even got the next round of carrots two weeks behind. So we stagger those every couple weeks. This way the carrots keep coming in and Tuck stays happy. Right, Boyo? This guy's already excited for a round of carrots. Not just yet though. We'll grab him a radish in a little bit because we've got some fresh radishes ready. Think about this too. This bed, we've got some, it like filled with plants practically. And we haven't even planted the summer stuff yet. So the harvests are going to be start coming in heavy. Let's check this out here, the Williams Pride apple. This is one of my favorite apples because it's ready so early. It tastes fantastic too. You'll notice all the white on it. That's from the surround kaolin clay. This is just natural clay that acts as a protectant to keep away some of the really nasty pests on the east coast. This thing is just stacked with fruit. It has so much that I've already thinned it a good amount, but I'm going to need to thin more because that's just too many apples on there. This guy can't wait. I think he wants a snack. I saw him up here sniffing those mustard greens. I think he's gonna want one. Yeah, we'll let him just go at it himself. He's gotta try to find something, some kind of snack in here. <laughs> what he really wants is the, uh, is the stalks, these things. He loves them, because they're, they're full of water. So we'll let him snack on one of those. Yeah, he's a pretty good dog. We decide we're gonna keep him around for a little bit. He works hard in the garden and we appreciate that. All right, big dog. That's why he's the boss. He works hard for his, uh, his keep. He's always protecting the garden. That's why he's the guardian of the garden. If you guys love seeing Tuck in the videos, hit the subscribe button. And also, if you wanna be part of the team, grab some of the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. We've got the gardening is life shirt with the flower of life right on it. Let's keep going though, there's so much more stuff to show. In a few days, we'll be adding the tomatoes. You'll notice where I planted tomatoes, there's garlic already growing. I love, and I've done this for years, planting my tomatoes right between the garlic. It's a great use of space, you get that extra harvest, and the, the garlic also helps keep some of the pests away from the tomatoes. Check out the blueberries this year. This is the pink lemonade blueberry. It probably has the most blueberries on it that I've ever seen. Look at that. Just gorgeous. And this thing is right next to uh, another variety of blueberry too. So the pink lemonade blueberries are actually pink and these blueberries are blue. So when they're growing together, it looks really cool like at the time of harvest because you've got two different colored berries right next to each other. The pears are looking nice also. Look at those, nice sized pears already. We've been thinning these too. So it's so important to thin your trees to allow the trees to focus on a few really good fruit instead of just having so many fruit that never actually reach maturity. Another pear right here with a good amount of fruit on it. Always this round kale and clan it. You gotta protect your harvest. Everything wants to come for this amazing fruit. Check out this birdies raised bed here. More of the same as you saw, the same kinds of plants, but some beautiful lettuces. I think this one's called the Forellenschluss. And uh, look at the size of the spinach here. The spinach always grows so well in this section and a bunch of different kinds of cabbage, the dead on the Savoy, the Mel Melissa Savoy, it's, uh, really nice stuff. Let's go over here. Look how beautiful this, uh, this bed is. This is the keyhole bed. It's a great use of space and it always is a good producer for us. 
Look at the size of some of these garlic. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. He found the, he found the radishes. These radishes are so awesome. Now, take it easy, my, my dude. This is the uh, pink lady slip, pink lady slipper. These ones are ready in like 25 days. So I'll get them off the bed by popping one of these out. Look at that. Look at the color. Come on, come on, boy. And I want to show you these beds because once I bring you over to the other bed, you'll see how empty it is. And I planted all these beds at the same time. So let me just see if I can take that off and see if he wants a bite. Come here, bud. He, he wants to just take it and go. <laughs> if I give him free reign, he'll just uh, go to town on a lot of this stuff. So I can only give him a little bit of time. Let me crack it for him. It's a little too big. There you go. I'm gonna try one too. Look at the spacing. Look how many are in there. <laughs> this is why I love gardening so much. Look at this one, this is a nice one. Oh yeah, not too big, perfect timing. A little dirt on it, but you know, dirt never hurt. Let's taste this. Mmm. So juicy, incredibly mild, not sharp at all. Oh, I can't wait to throw one of these in a salad. I've got some fresh lettuce over there that we'll grab. Maybe in a little bit we can throw together a nice salad and uh, start to get some of the fruits of our labor. I need to show you just two more beds before I bring you to the issue that we're really having. This bed, same as the others. Bunch of uh, purple lettuces in here though. Cabbages. Beets coming up, so this one's going to be stacked too. Different kinds of radishes, but I want to show you the garlic over here. Look how beautiful this garlic is. This is going to be my greatest garlic harvest ever. Look at the size of these. Everything went perfect this year. I picked a great spot for the garlic, and I've got some good varieties like the music garlic. This is a great variety. So soon there's going to be an insane garlic harvest, and uh, the radishes, the lettuces, the harvest. Harvests are already coming in and they're about to be non-stop. Let me bring you over to the bed that I'm having issues with now. Think about how incredible all those other beds looked. This bed was planted at the same exact time as those and look how poorly a lot of the plants are doing. These are starting to wilt. Look how much smaller this is than the other cabbage that I had planted. Check out how some of these cabbages are a lot smaller but they're also looking sad. Check out over here too, one of the lettuces. This thing just up and died. Look at the carrots. Look how low the germination rate is. Look over here at these carrots. Barely any of them came up. So I really didn't know what the issue was at first. It took me a while to find out why. A lot of my young plants were dying off, the young seedlings, and they just weren't showing a lot of growth. Check out these radishes. Compared to the other, other bed, the other bed was just full of radishes. These, only a few of them made it. And even the ones that did make it, look how bitten up and stuff they are. So the issue was, a pest called garden symphylin. You can see them as I just pull the one radish out. They're not even insects. They're actually real closely related to centipedes and millipedes. So let me pull another one out. You'll be able to see them. They attack the roots of young plants. See one there? This is why my young plants have had a lot of issues trying to get established in this spot because this uh, pest, it feeds on the roots of young plants. So the young plants really have a tough time getting established. That's why they're just getting destroyed in this section, especially compared to the other section. It may not look that bad, but it really is causing a lot of damage. I can see the comparison. Here's one right here. I can see the comparison from, uh, from my other beds. The thing that's unfortunate is I don't really think that there's a way to resolve this issue. There's not really a good way to eradicate them. Look, there's a number of them right there. So I'm at a, you know, not sure what exactly I should do. I'm thinking of just removing all the soil from this one bed because typically they're known to stay in hot spots. So I guess this is just one of the spots that they really are all just kind of hanging out. And I really don't want the issue to spread to other beds. So I think I might just remove a lot of this, take all this stuff out, remove the soil and just take it off the property. Because at this time of the year, they're known to stay in about the top six inches of the soil. So I don't want to just be feeding the population by leaving the plants in here. It's, I mean, it's a bit unfortunate, but 
I, I mean, even though it's unfortunate, it's one of the reasons that I love gardening so much because nothing is ever promised to you and there's always something new to learn. Uh, I'm thankful that it's not like the whole entire garden or something, but it's like, that's why actually getting the harvest from fresh organic food, it's like, it's so rewarding because nothing is ever promised in a garden. Look at this bed right over here. It's just right next to that one and it's doing so much better. The size of some of these lettuces, this lettuce looks really nice. Look at, look at some of these radishes. Look at the size of those. So I'm seeing very little damage. I'm seeing some splitting because that one got too big. And look at this one, looking really nice. So I don't really think the issue is in this bed. So what I don't want is to be like spreading the issue from bed to bed. So I think I'm just going to dig out a lot of that soil and then possibly remove it. The other thing I found online was that sometimes uh, planting potatoes can actually, you know, help decrease the population. So I haven't decided if I want to put potatoes in there or if I just want to try to remove like all the soil, eradicate the issue in the first place and not try to have to like manage through it. Regardless, we still have so many, so many beds that are doing excellent. Like this new one I just put in over here. Check out the cedar raised bed. Come on this side so you can see in the sun how, uh, how nice the bed looks. Look at the, look at the, uh, just the grains on the wood that come out on the cedar because we, we did the show Sogi Bond. We burned this and look at this bed. That same top, I planted this one even later than the other and look how much bigger it is, looking much healthier. So we don't have the issue in this bed, so we're fortunate for that. And I'm thankful that the problem, it seems like it remains in one kind of hot spot. Let me show you some of the, uh, some of the tomatoes and stuff that we have. This is gonna all be going in the ground soon. Look, at, I, I'm known to you know plant way too much stuff and then not have enough places to put it, but I'd always rather have extra. Look at all these tomatoes. It's going to be an insane year for growing tomatoes. Uh, can't wait to get these in the ground. They're getting large. I, you know, I tell people not to do it, but I planted too early, so then I had to uh, put them in bigger pots, but that's okay, because I'll have bigger tomatoes. So I'm happy about that. And the weather's looking nice, so I'm gonna be able to get the tomatoes in relatively early this year, I think. Take a peek just straight up and check out the grapes. I pruned these really nice as well, so <laughs> every shoot is gonna have grapes on it. There's gonna, it looks like another great year for grapes. We're so happy about that also. So uh, me and Tuck are just loving the weather, loving that the harvests are starting to come in. Right behind me over here, we've got a sour cherry, but I wanna show you some stuff in this corner over here. Like this pear, this is the Chijiro pear. Look how nice the pears are looking on there. Thinned really nicely as well, so there's not too many pears on it and it won't break the branches Branches like I actually had happen in the past. And everything in here is, in for, is here for a purpose. Like all these things in the ground, it seems like these are weeds. These are all echinaceas. So these are all going to be flowers, which are one of my favorite flowers, the echinacea. It's a beneficial, it's, a, it's good for you. It's a, overall an amazing plant. You know what these are, the asparagus. This is one of Tuck's favorite locations. Asparagus growing, and check this out right here. This is a lettuce that actually came up on its own, so I left it, and a cucumber right behind it. So this thing just self-seeded. We let it go, and there's free food, a volunteer. Let's keep going, though. We've got the hazelnuts here. The fruit should start, the nuts should start to show on this one, but this, look, look at the size of this tree. It's one of the, this is the king of the garden and the queen is the, the Rainier cherry, which has so many cherries on it this year. The Honeycrisp apple, this is my favorite overall apple. This thing is just loaded with apples and uh, I can't wait to eat this one. We haven't thinned it yet because this is a later, later, later blooming apple, so the apples are still really tiny on it. Then right here, we have the Liberty, the most disease resistant apple tree on the planet. They, these are larger, even though it's a late producer, it's a really good tree and uh, covered in the surround kale and clay as you can see. Come this way. <laughs> like I said, the queen of the garden, look at the Rainier. This thing has so much fruit on it this year. Check it. It's hard to cover this one with the surround, but there's a lot of cherries this year. So we're really happy about that. In the past, we had some issues, issues with brown rot, but we dealt with them. And now we have a, looks like a bumper crop. And we've got the other cherry right here. This is the gold cherry. This one's a little further behind, but look at all the cherries. Another sweet cherry. This tree has just gotten massive also, and uh, should be a good harvest this year. 
come this way. I added a bunch of blueberries, some new blueberries in the section. So I got more, a bunch more of the pink lemonade blueberries because they did so well. Then this is an apple tree I just recently planted. Just last year, I think, this is the Liberty, another Liberty, and then more blueberries over here. Brand new, another apple tree. This is another honey crisp, my favorite variety, like I had mentioned. And uh, we've got some currants back here. This is the white currant, one of my favorite currants. I've got white currant here, and I've got another white currant under my apple tree. And I, uh, these, these are really nice. I, I believe they're called the champagne currants my favorite variety so then i just propagated some of them and spread them to different locations then we've got some peas back here look at these peas a bunch of different varieties here's the cascadia which is looking really nice and you will notice the insect netting i have over top of it and this insect netting i just love it so much this is what keeps the birds out because the birds love eating on the eating the young shoots of my peas and uh this really just prevents any issues from that Tuck's looking for snacks, but he's not getting anything else now. The blackberries, look at this. The bees are having fun on the blackberries. This is one of the last things to bloom, the blackberries, the raspberries. Look at that. The thing's having a blast up there. So look how we have pruned this to a lot of, a lot of laterals. This way it has a lot of fruit on it because on your blackberries, a lot of the fruit is gonna be on those laterals. So this thing is stacked with fruit. We'll keep moving back. Here's a better example of the laterals. Look at this one cane. And then I pruned the lateral branches down to about a foot or two. And now the whole thing is just stacked with fruit. And then just take a peek right above you. And this is a massive peach tree. One of my oldest trees. This thing's like 10 years old at least, maybe 11 years old. And it's, uh, I try to keep it as short as I can, but it's just so big. Let's check out these raspberries real quick. This is my favorite kind of raspberries. These are the yellow raspberries. I've got some of the yellow Anne and some of the, the full gold raspberries. Both of them are fall bearing raspberries. So you could kind of make them ever bearing depending on what you want. So these ones I left up from last year, the canes. Now they're producing berries early. So I get a nice early summer crop, but then the other half of the patch I cut down so that new shoots come up and then I'll get the fall crop. So this way I kind of get the best of both worlds. And then I'll do the same thing with ne next year. This way I can get the most out of this little raspberry patch while also like uh, extending the harvest just a bit longer. Check out this oregano that I planted a few years ago. <laughs> I'll never have to plant another one again. Gotta have some perennials going through the garden. I've got a bunch of others that I didn't have time to show. Uh, there's still the side garden that I haven't showed, but we'll save that for another video. Look at Tuck going through the patch. This guy's a curious guy. Right, Techie? That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck had a lot of fun out here. It's just so fantastic that spring is here. The weather's getting nice. The plants are all growing. It's, uh, it's like a paradise out here. We love spending our time out here and we love sharing it with all of you. I wanted to thank one of our new channel members, Andy Johnson. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. It's a bit unfortunate that I'm having the issues in that one bed over there, and I hope it doesn't transfer into the other bed, but when it comes down to it, I'm just so grateful to have the opportunity to have all these other beds too, to have a lot of space to be able to grow in. And it seems like that pest really affects the young plants. So I think if I transplant older plants into the bed, then it might be able to get past that. So the plants might not grow as well as they do in these sections, but I still think I'll be able to get some harvest from that spot, or I might just replace the soil. We'll see what happens, but I'm sure we're gonna figure it out. Me and Tuck also wanted to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a gardening is life shirt with a flower of life on it and just be part of the team. I mean, I, I know I said it already, but <laughs> we just, me and Tuck had a lot of fun out here. We love that it's actually spring. This is what we've been waiting and hibernating all winter for, and it's finally here, and the harvests are starting to come in. Tuck and James will be back to you again real soon. We out.